All right, I'm looking at section 11.1, number 30. The sequence 1 plus negative 1 to the nth power is going to diverge. Our intuition tells us that um, it's going to bounce back and forth between 0 when n is an odd number and 2 when n is an even number. But I want to talk about how to argue that the sequence diverges using the definition of convergence. To do that, let's take a look at the definition of convergence. Okay, a sequence AN converges if there are, now there's a whole bunch of things going on here. There is some L in the real numbers, the number which the sequence will converge to, such that for all epsilon, think of those epsilons as small numbers, <coughs> there is some uh, you could think of this as a function, but uh, just think of this as a fixed number n epsilon for each epsilon in n, such that for all n greater than that n epsilon, which are integers, a n minus l is less than epsilon. <laughs> that is quite a big statement, and I have this nested as four statements. And notice that each one of these statements say, for some L in R, and then everything that follows underneath it is some property that of L. And here, all epsilon in 0 to infinity, then everything below it is a property of epsilon. What we're dealing with here is what's called a nested categorical statement. And so to understand the negation of that definition, we're going to need to understand the negation of this nested categorical statement. Uh, to do that, let's just take a sidestep into uh, simpler categorical statements. <clears throat> okay, here's a, a kind of categorical statement. All x in S have property P. For example, all students in 21C have a 3.9 GPA. Okay, so what does it show? Now, what does it take to show that the statement is false? What is the negation? of a statement of that form. Well, look, if there is a single student that does not have a, a GPA of 3.9, then this statement is false. So the negation of this all students type statement is a some student type statement. The statement all students in 21C have a 3.9 GPA is false if some student in 21C does not have a 3.9 GPA. OK, and in general, a negation of an all statement is a some statement. And similarly, let's look, take a look at a, a sum statement. Sum x in S has property P. Again, this is a categorical statement because it's a, a statement about a category. S is a category of objects. X is a, something in that category of objects, like a student in a class. And then P is a property P. So this is essentially saying that this, the category itself, or the set here, has the property P. But it's saying that in this way, that uh, some thing in that set has the property P. Okay, so that's the idea of a categorical statement, is that we're really talking about the category here, some, some property the category has, by talking about properties that the things in the category have. Um, okay, so the idea that some thing in the category has property P, uh, you could make a simple example. Some pen in this room has ink. I'm getting worried about this guy. I mean, you can see right there that uh, there used to be ink all up and down there, and he's going to run out pretty soon, maybe by the end of the video. So what does it take to show that that statement is false, that some pen in this room has ink? I would need to look at every single pen in the room and determine that all pens in the room do not have ink, but there are pens all over the place in this room. That would take quite some time. So again, the uh, negation of an all statement is a sum statement, and the negation of a sum statement is an all statement. So. Going back to our definition, which is a nested categorical statement, <clears throat> we need to replace all of these sum statements with all statements, and all the all statements with sum statements. And that looks like this. An does not converge if, for all L and R, some statement follows, and that's why I've nested this, right? Everything that follows is some property about L. And the idea here is that for all L, our sequence is not going to converge to L. All right. And then you need to say that for all L, there is some epsilon such that you can't get within epsilon distance of L in the sequence. 
down here, a n minus l is not within epsilon. That, right? So there's some epsilon that you can't get close enough to. And to make that precise, we have parts 3 and 4 here. So there is some epsilon such that for all integers n epsilon, there is some n bigger uh, than n epsilon such that n minus l is not uh, less than epsilon. OK, that's quite a complicated thing, but we can put it together in a relatively simple form to argue that this particular sequence diverges. In particular, we want to say for all L in the real numbers, okay, we're doing that because, again, we're looking at the negation of a for some L statement. OK, uh, let, let's examine this. 1 plus negative 1 to the n minus l. OK, that expression, uh, I will do a piecewise equation here. That expression is 0 minus l if n is odd. And it is 2 minus l if n is even. Okay. So now, um, that is to say for all L in the real numbers, this equation, this expression right here, uh, this expression is either the absolute value of 0 minus L, the distance between 0 and L, or the distance between 2 and L. Then it's even or odd. Okay. The next part of our negation of the definition is that there's going to be some epsilon such that we can't get within epsilon of L uh, using our sequence. So let's see. With epsilon <coughs> equal to 1 half, I choose 1 half because I don't think we're going to be able to get within 1 half of 0 and within 1 half of 2. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the next part is for all n epsilon in n, there is some. Okay, so let's see. For all n epsilon, oh, I do that sometimes, write a 3 instead of an epsilon. For all n epsilon in the natural numbers, there is some n bigger than n epsilon. Okay, such that. One plus negative one to the n minus l is not less than epsilon, which is one half. Okay, so that is to say, it doesn't matter how big we force n to be. Uh, if we're considering the list of all n's bigger than n epsilon, well, then there's going to be two things that do this. Okay, since for any odd n bigger than n epsilon, we must have uh, 1 plus negative 1 to the n minus l um, less than a half is equivalent to, so if uh, n is odd, this is 0 minus l is less than a half. OK, so for any odd n greater than this, we'll have that statement, right, which, which is equivalent to this. Uh, and for any even n greater than n epsilon. Now, certainly, to take any integer n epsilon, and there's an even number greater than it and an odd number greater than it. Um, <clears throat> 1 plus negative 1 to the n minus l less than a half is equivalent to 2 minus l is less than 1 half. Okay, so taking a look at this, 
is it possible to have n epsilon big enough so that we're guaranteed the dif difference between the value of our sequence, either 0 or 2, and L is less than a half. Well, look, this can't work for any uh, value of L since there is no value of L which satisfies both this inequality and this equality. The system um, 0 minus L is less than a half. Z 2 minus L less than a half has no solutions. Okay. And uh, off on the side, I'll just draw this picture. If this is 0, then saying that L is within 1 half of 0 means that L is somewhere in this interval from negative a half to a half somewhere in there. Whereas, here's 1, and here's uh, 2 then, saying that L is within 1 half of 2 is saying that L is somewhere in here. And there is no number that is both within this interval and within this interval. Uh, this interval goes from 3 halves to 5 halves. Okay, so that is to say, for any L in the real numbers, you can't f force all of the elements of the sequence to be within zero, uh, within a half of L and within a half of two, uh, within, a, uh, within a half of zero and within a half of two by forcing N to be bigger than something. Okay, try to digest that. Now, I really like this problem because it forces you to look back at some elementary logic stuff, which is really important to understand in general for constructing decent arguments and understanding negations. Uh, be sure you work out a few problems in this variety.